Hey guys, I'm Zockley and welcome to today's tutorial stream. Now this stream is designed to teach you the basics of space engineers and get you started on the path to engineering. So, as soon as you load the game up for the first time, you will be greeted with this menu. And uh, you've got new game, old game, join game, which is a multiplayer options. And from here, you want to change maybe uh, some various settings, um, including your like display settings and graphical settings. But the game should detect uh, good settings for your system by default. So let's now go ahead and create a new game. So we'll click on the new game screen, and we're greeted with two options in the quick start option. We have um, easy start space and the first jump. The first of which is more of a playground for, design, for designing some ships and playing around with some of the mechanics in Space Engineers. Uh, the first jump is a more cinematic uh, tutorial. It's actually, well, it, it is a tutorial, it's a tutorial campaign. So it's a brief, short campaign which will teach you some of the elements of the game. But for the purpose of this stream, we're gonna go ahead and jump into Easy Start Space. So let's uh, come down here and hit Start. Here we are, we're into the game for the first time. And one of the things that we're greeted with here is on the screen is F1 for help. Now this is quite key because even if you don't follow this uh, tutorial uh, the whole way, if you ever get stuck in the game, hitting F1 will greet you with this screen which gives you access to our forums, our Steam forums, our feedback site, and then down here we have uh, tutorials uh, written by players and our wiki and then also the list of control uh, bindings, which you can flick through as well. So this is all here for you to uh, look for help at any time, and this is always going to be there for you. So definitely remember, F1 is for help. So we can just close this here. And we've appeared in our first world. And what we can do is we can use the WASD keys to move around, WASD, shall I say, and then the mouse to look around the world. So that's, it's pretty standard controls here. Now, to change from first to third person, we can hit V. We can see our green engineer here. And some of the other kind of ground-based character controls, we've got C for crouch, space for jump, and shift for sprint. Now, we're gonna talk a bit more about the actual uh, suit controls here and like some of the key bindings related to that. So, all the keys are actually uh, noticeable on the HUD here to start with, and you can tab the HUD on and off by flicking through the modes. The first mode is like this, with all the key bindings, you hit tab again, the key bind disappear, and you hit tab again, and then you can completely remove the uh, HUD there. So we bring it back up. We can see that J is for opening our helmet visor, which I don't advise doing in space, by the way. Uh, second is X for jetpack, and this is, comes with its own set of controls. So again, you can use WASD for moving around, but with the addition of space to ascend and C to descend, and also Q and E to roll. Now there's one other point to do with jetpack, and that is your dampeners. Now, your inertial dampeners will try and keep you uh, in a stationary hover um, all, at all times. So right now, if I move forwards and take my hands off the controls, it would automatically come to a stop. But if I hit Z to turn off my dampeners, and now you can see in the bottom left, the hazard icon has gone red, we now will keep on drifting forever, basically. So this can sometimes be useful when trying to chase after a ship. And this is the kind of thing that I think you will discover as you play the game. But normally it's better to keep those dampeners on so you don't get lost out in space. Right then, so we'll come back down here and then we can hit X again to uh, turn off the jetpack. Because there is artificial gravity here on this platform, we do in fact drop. But if I was out here in space, I would just be there floating. Uh, and if I hadn't said already, guys, uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat in a second to actually 
uh, see if there's any questions about new player questions, right? Or if you are not a new player, you might have some suggestions uh, of things to help new players. Like maybe there were some issues that you had when you were playing the game for the first time and that you uh, learnt, which could have been saved if you had le uh, known the uh, shortcuts earlier, right? So also on the toolbar, uh, on the uh, HUD, sorry, we've got O, which is our broadcasting. Uh, this basically transmits our position to other ships and other players. And it's normally best to keep that on. Maybe you want to turn that off if you want to stay stealthy. And finally on the left, we have L for uh, our, our headlights here, our helmet lights. Definitely useful when you go off uh, into darker patches of the... Uh, Maybe go mining inside tunnels and stuff. That's always useful. So I'll have a quick look at chat here to see if there's anything key I've missed here. Oh uh, yes, also you can use dampeners off to save fuel because of course if you're drifting forward now with a certain velocity, it means that there's no more thrust going into it so you're not using any more fuel to carry on moving forward. Whereas if I had dampeners on, I'd have to hold down the W key to move forward, right? So it's a good point there. Saving fuel can also be good for uh, having your dampeners off. Let me just check. Okay, so to actually, I didn't actually mention this, but to change your distance from your character in third person, if you hold Alt, that will first allow you to move around your character. I've been doing it, and then you can use Alt and Scroll Wheel to actually zoom out further away from your character. And you can see I can zoom out quite far to see this entire platform and the ship attached to it. There we go, and. Uh, also, hitting V twice will reset your camera orientation back to the kind of standard position, but it won't reset the zoom. So, next on the list, um, I wanted to talk about the kind, now we've got the basic controls for your character, I want to talk about the um, kind of the sandbox nature of the game. Now in Space Engineers, there are many, many different ways to play the game. And in the community, it's incredibly diverse. And there is no true way how to play Space Engineers. So part of it, a lot of it, is building ships and building creations. But also, if you want to like do a slower pace uh, scenario, you can have there can be survival scenarios. If you want to be doing um, racing with race cars or dog fighting with fighters, um, or even first-person shooters, there's maps out there to play on. So really, it's, it's a huge uh, sandbox with a ton of potential, and we've been continuously blown away by what players have actually created within Space Engineers that we wouldn't have necessarily have thought of at the inception of the game, right? So that's kind of going over the sandbox stuff about the game, and now we come on to the main difference between the two modes in the game, creative and survival mode. In creative mode, you don't have to worry about like dying or you don't have to worry about resources. You have unlimited resources and you can build whatever you want. So creative mode is great for prototyping builds, for having fun really quickly and uh, designing ships, that kind of stuff. But if you're into kind of uh, worrying about your oxygen levels or your um, energy levels and all that stuff, then survival is going to be just for you. And also survival comes with managing resources in a much, much deeper, more complex way to creative. So both are fun in their own right and good for different scenarios. And we'll actually go over the process of the survival, getting the raw materials and processing them into usable components in a little bit. Let's kind of say we're in survival. We're not in survival, but we can still do some of the survival mechanics uh, in creative mode. So if I now turn the HUD and with the tab button and hit the G screen, and this will allow us to configure our toolbar with various blocks. So now we're greeted with the G screen, and you can see here there's many, many different blocks here, which you don't need to worry about when you first get started, and they'll kind of come into play as you um, discover the game more and more. Now, this different categories here, you've got armor blocks, cockpit blocks, you've got conveyor networks, all this stuff, but really don't worry about it too much right now. So in terms of configuring your toolbar, the default toolbar comes with the main blocks you'll need. You've got light and heavy armor, a cockpit, a reactor, iron thrusters, atmospheric thrusters, and gyroscope. And actually, this is all you need to actually build your first ship. So that's already set up in that way, right? 
Um, but what I'm going to do is first is if I just come out of this and then use the comma and um, full stop key to actually uh, shift between the different toolbars, I ha can have up to nine toolbars. So that actually even increases the amount of uh, um, shortcuts I can have here. So I will just go here to uh, toolbar two. And on toolbar two, for example, I will equip one of each weapon. So automatic rifle, welder, and I'm equipping these by either double clicking or right clicking. And you all so you can also drag down here. So there's three ways you can actually equip things to your toolbar. And I'll double click this drill down here as well. So there we go, that's the four kind of main weapon slash tools that you have at your disposal. I'll go to first person here, you can see the drill. Now as soon as I equip the drill, um, I actually get indications on the HUD for various ores because the drill has a built-in ore detector. So in this asteroid that we're on right now, it's got ice, cobalt, and iron. So let's go for some iron because iron is tends to be the, the main resource of the game. Turn on my headlights with L as well. It's a bit dark down here in the shadow. So using right click now, I can actually drill into this voxel and deform it. See, I'm making a little tunnel here. And right click is a, a quicker way of drilling, but it doesn't pick up any resources. When we get to the resources in a second, we're going to want to click left click to actually uh, harvest those resources or get the ones we want. So let's come in here a second, we're almost there. We're uh, 11 meters away, so let's keep pushing on. And also, as someone says, when it comes to changing the toolbar, you can also use control plus uh, a number to switch between them as well. And all these shortcuts and stuff are um, actually documented in the controls. So definitely spend the time going through those advanced and basic controls to actually learn all the shortcuts. Because there's a lot of shortcuts in the game and they can be really, really useful um, when you're first getting started, right? So here we've actually hit the iron vein in this asteroid. And we have these little chunks of iron, which we can, if I use the left click on here, mine hit mine now, I can hit F to pick up these chunks of iron. And this is chunks of rock, which we could pick up, but it's not the most important thing right now. So let's carry on drilling the iron ore here. Let's get a bit of this. Hear me? And you can also hold, you don't have to press F. You can actually also just hold F down to point. And you, can't, you might not be able to pick up some of the smaller bits here. Keep going in. Big chunks. We can open our inventory with I. Now, if we do this, we can see that we have 1.6, sorry, 4.61k of uh, iron ore and 112 uh, kilograms of stone here. That should be enough, actually, just for the, the purpose of this, uh, showing you the main uh, order how to get usable components right. So we'll, we'll take this ore out. We'll kind of backtrack through our little tunnel here. Come out, let's see what we've dug. And yeah, using our jetpack controls, which we would have learned at the very start, we can maneuver back towards the platform and the ship. And if we land back on the platform, we can come over to these industrial blocks here. And these are the blocks we want to use or interact with to do the processing. So we've got a large cargo container here, a small large, a small cargo container, uh, a reactor, refinery, and an assembler. Now to process this, I can either go to the um, refinery, or I can actually access the refinery through the assembler. Now this gets onto something deeper called the conveyor kind of system in the game. So all these access ports are actually part of a conveyor network. And you can see there's conveyor tubes here which are just meant for uh, transporting materials around a ship or station. But that's why I can actually come to the car container and then I can actually access the um, refinery from there. But for, for this sake, I will actually just go over to the refinery's um, access port and hit F. I should also note that as I'm in creative mode right now, I have an unlimited size inventory. In survival modes, you will actually have a set uh, value for that inventory. So you'll fill up and eventually you'll have to empty your ore before you can mine any more. So that's also key. So now I have the um, refinery controls here and um, by clicking this, I can show the other connected cargo storage 
on the grid. I can see the assembler down here and uh, the other large uh, car containers that are on the grid. But we're just interested in the refiner right now. So there's already some platinum and some ingots, iron ingots in there that have already been refined. So what I have to do is, is just drag the iron into the refinery and right away you can hear that it's spooling up and uh, that raw uh, iron ore is actually getting processed into ingots here. Here we go, and that's plenty of iron for what we need for the... I'm really going to show you now uh, what you need to do with this. Um, we're not going to go through all the different uh, materials, but there are many, many different uh, raw materials you can get, uh, and you'll need to get them if you want to build certain blocks. But I'm just going to build some basic uh, blocks here that only require iron. And it's the same steps for actually um, mining all over ore. You'll find with your uh, hand drill or with your uh, ship that you might build later to improve your efficiency when mining, uh, you will actually find different deposits of ore. And you might have to travel. You might have to go to different asteroids or different planets to actually find certain types of materials. So I'm keeping an eye on the chat here, making sure I haven't missed too many things. I've definitely noticed a couple of things there. So we'll take out all the ingots, that's, oh, we'd have to take them out actually, so what we'll do now, that because they're connected via the conveyor network, we don't have to move them at all. All we have to do now is go to the production tab within this terminal screen. So we hit production, and now we are uh, like presented with the production tab, and we have here assembler one, because we only have one assembler on the grid. And we can switch between disassembling, so you can also recycle old components to actually make, uh, to get raw materials back, but we're not worrying about that now either. We're just gonna create some simple steel plates. Now, if you look at steel plates, they only require uh, iron ingots. And uh, let's, if I click on this here, I've clicked it once, and I see that one steel plate has been produced here. And if I do control click, I can produce 10, or shift click to produce 100. Okay. And this is automatically pulling the iron ore from the, uh, the refinery into the assembler here. And of course, can, yeah, control and shift click makes a thousand. We can do that right now. We have plenty of iron. So here we can see a thousand and twenty odd uh, steel plates are being assembled. And they're going into the inventory of the assembler. So that's just probably enough for now. And if we click on this, this takes us right to the assembler's inventory. And we can still see the iron ore being pulled in from the um, refinery there. And we can also see uh, the, what's being produced. So we can take the steel plates and drag them into our inventory. I really have to stress that, again, in survival modes, you will have max uh, size in your inventory. So you, won't, you might not be able to take as much as I'm transporting, but the You'll, you'll soon discover that because it will not let you uh, add any more into your inventory here. I'm not going into a, into a uh, deep survival um, explainer today, just something to get you started and to explain the main uh, kind of mechanics in survival, which is mining, refining, and assembling. That's the key thing here. We've done the mining, we've done the assembling, and uh, refining and the assembling, and now we just need to do some actual actually building here in survival mode. So, in survival modes, what you normally have is when you place a block down, so let me actually flick back using the uh, either control one or using the comma keys to go back to the other toolbar, I can uh, select one on my toolbar now and I have an armor block. This is the most important block that uh, you need for a grid or a ship pretty much. It's, it's the foundation block you might say, normally. Um, now if I place it in creative mode, no resources are required, I just place it down. And likewise, if I get this up again on one and right click, I can delete that block. So what we're going to do is, for this, um, because there is some unfinished blocks here, this is uh, an unfinished armor block. I'm going to take my welder, and you'll see when I come over it, I have a recipe just above me here. Now this light armor block needs 25 uh, steel plates. And if I check my inventory here, I have 295. 
Now, one thing you'll note is that when I weld this up, because they're in creator mode, I won't actually use those components, but in survival, you would actually have those components taken from your inventory. So, along with having enough of that, I can weld it up, go through various stages, and then finally we have a complete armor block here. And sometimes incomplete blocks are kind of used for de uh, decorative means, uh, in, like for like scaffolding, and they're also used as a cheap way to build up, yeah, actually scaffolding, to actually get higher up, and maybe in a shipyard you want to, uh, rather than spend all the resources on a completed block, you really do just want something to get you uh, higher, right? So that's, that's something there. Um, again, I've, I've got more steel plates, but I can come over to this, I can complete these if I want to as well. You can see the uh, process construction bar go up. I think the really the key thing is here, if you ever get stuck, is to really hit F1. You can go to basic controls, you see all the controls for different things, um, the block placement controls, everything is all here. So if I jump back off this, another way of getting resources is actually grinding. So I can come up to something that's already being constructed here, let's say this arm block over here, and if I pointed it, I can do the reverse. So I can begin to deconstruct this block and I, will, I should get, well I won't because I'm in creator mode, but I would get these materials, so this would be uh, 21 steel plates returned to my inventory, right? And that's another way of getting materials and then if I want to come and reuse those, those components, sorry, for something else, I can come to the assembler, go to production, uh, go to disassembling, and what will happen is now, if I click disassemble all, these steel plates will be disassembled and they'll be returned to their raw material. So you see now the iron ingots are actually going up because we're recycling uh, those particular um, components. Right, it's a meteor storm inbound as well, the sounds of it, so our gatlings are gonna be sorting out the meteor storm on the, the base gatlings and the ship gatlings have got us covered. Um, and that is kind of the, the main, uh, the basic introduction to just survival mode. And I realized some of the things went on, but in terms of showing you the process of getting raw materials and refining them and assembling components, that should actually be a nice introduction there. What I'll quickly do is show you how you can increase your efficiency with this by using ship uh, welders and grinders and drills. So this is a pre-built ship here. This is a ship grinder, ship drill, sorry and I can get in this, and the controls for a ship, this actually brings us on nicely to ship controls, we can use the WASD keys, it's the same as the jetpack pretty much, um, space bar to ascend, C to descend, Q and E to roll, and um, dampeners are also there. So you can see now we've got this panel over here is lit up because this is information that is actually key for um, ship controls. Now. I forgot to mention that you can get into a ship, actually, by approaching a cockpit, and this is a cockpit block here, I can maybe fly up there with jetpack, and when it highlights in yellow, that's something that I can interact with. And it says on the key, on the actual screen, press F to enter the cockpit. Now F is the main use key in the game, and um, it's the same for opening doors and accessing panels and many of those things. And I might have even forgot to mention that, to access a panel, you'll also need to press F. So it's a good one to remember. So now we're back in the ship, and I was going over the controls. You can turn off dampen as a Z, and then you will be end up floating without any input from your mouse. Um, you have O for turning off broadcasting on your ship. You have Y, which turns the power on your ship. So now the power is completely turned off, and that may be useful when you've actually landed on a station or a ship, and you want to preserve your power. So you can, once you've come down here, I can't remember if this one, okay, this one has no landing gear, so that's actually not the best one for the test. If I hop into one of the, the uh, other ones here, the fighter, just come over here, hop into the fighter, um, and hide the HUD for a second. You'll see those two, these blocks here are landing gears. Now when we come into range of something we can lock with, the landing gears will actually turn yellow. And once we're ready to lock, we can press the P to lock it. And now we have actually lock the ship with the station so it cannot be budged off that. And you can see on the, just here, that the uh, handbrake, or not the handbrake, it will be handbrake, it was a ground vehicle, but the landing gear 
has been locked. And I can press that again to unlock. And now once I've unlocked here, I am ready. The status has changed to yellow and I'm good to ascend and fly off here. So I, uh, I'm I definitely, there's lots and lots of things to remember the game. And even when I'm trying to teach you guys here in this uh, relatively short stream, it's actually, there's so many things to get through. So um, apologize if I did miss that at the very uh, start there. But luckily chat's also helping me to remind me of what features I need to remember. So I wanted to show off the drills. So this is kind of the controls for the, the ship. And let's get back into the, the ship drill. And this ship has a, it configured in a way that it's on the toolbar. So when I hit one, I turn on the right drill, and two turns on the left drill. And I approach this ice patch, which is on the uh, asteroid here. Now actually you can see we're drilling away into this asteroid at a much quicker rate. And also the ore is being automatically collected into our ship rather than we have to pick it up manually with F. So um, opening up the inventory screen with K, of I, sorry, we can go to this to show all inventories on the ship and we can scroll down and the drills are empty because we've been mining ice. The ice has been automatically pulled into the oxygen and hydrogen generator automatically. And this is something because of the um, conveyor network. And you see here we have the drill. And this is something that wasn't really planned to cover in the tutorial. But um, conveyor networks are definitely your friends uh, later on in the game to help you uh, automate and speed up the process because otherwise if this conveyor network wasn't here I'd have to come over to the access hatch on the drill hit F open up the inventory and then manually drag out certain uh, ores and then move them to the right car container so this definitely um, is something car, conveyor network is something that um, we're not going to cover so much in this video because I don't think you need it to get started and have some fun And next on the list of your first kind of experience with um, Space Engineers is actually to um, build your first ship. Now this will also incorporate the kind of building and creative mode part of this tutorial. So I want to come over to the sun because the sun is setting here. It's nice to have some sun. And we can build on the platform maybe while the sun is still here. So I turn on, open up my toolbar. You can go to all blocks, G, and then, actually we don't need to do that. Just go back to the first toolbar by hitting uh, comma or control one. And I can press one to get the armor block. Now to start with, we, hear, we have an armor block which is in the large grid mode. So what we need to do is to build a small grid like a fighter is actually hit the one key again and now we've switched to the small grid. So we can hit that again and again to switch between large and small grid building. So now we've got a small grid. Um, we can place it down. And by clicking on the different faces, we can actually start to build this grid up. Now something to help you on your mission of building a ship. Oh, hey. Okay, no, I made a mistake there. I should have built a landing gear. I mean, sometimes if you're careful, you don't have to build a landing gear. But in fact, I will build a landing gear because that will help me actually not drift away because the landing gear will automatically lock to the grid. So my bad there. You don't need a landing gear, but it definitely helps when building in space. So let me just drag a landing gear onto the wheels because we're not going to be doing any wheels this very second. Same with the landing gear. We have the large grid landing gear here. So by hitting eight again, we can actually um, get this uh, landing gear placed. And then using the control hints up there, we can rotate this landing gear to actually face the right way. And it's okay making me making, making some mistakes because actually some of these mistakes, some of the things that you guys might actually have when you start playing the game, like knowing to need a landing gear is actually something that you might not realize to start with. So that's actually totally fine that that happens. So landing gear is a good option. Right, so using uh, eight again to switch to small grid and then I'm going to do um, page up to spin this around. Holding control and hitting um, the keys in the top right actually moves this by 90 degrees. And that's actually a lot better if you're trying to align it with a, another grid. 
Uh, hitting B actually does that as well. I think when you're facing a grid, maybe that's, maybe that's not quite right. So, small landing gear placed. This is creative mode, so we don't have to worry again about uh, needing certain resources. Um, even in survival mode, landing gears are locked automatically, so that's also a pretty useful thing. So what we can do is, we can start building on this landing gear, which is safely locked, so if I accidentally run into it now, it's not going to fly off into space. Before we go any further, I'm going to talk about symmetry mode, because symmetry mode means if you want to build a symmetrical ship, rather than like having to go click here and then run around to the other side, we can actually use symmetry modes, which will mirror our block placement. So if I come up here and I hit um, M, this activates like uh, symmetry mode, and I can move the position of the where the actual line of symmetry is on this grid. It's a tiny little grid here, and it's the same for this big grid, and it's the same for the ship, which actually already has um, a uh, line of symmetry on it. This is really key for saving time when building. So I can place it down here with left mouse button, so it's now placed. If I click it somewhere else, it will move that to a different position. Now, by hitting M, you see I actually switch between the different axes. And each axis actually has two modes. We have an alignment mode where you ha you, you'll have a middle, a central block. So say here we have three blocks wide and the line of symmetry is in the middle of that center block. Or pinning M again actually where the line of symmetry is between two blocks. So it's depending really if you want to have a very central block here, right? And the same if I change this mode now, I'll be kind of building in twos, you might say, building in pairs rather than... I personally prefer to have it built on um, the center of a single block and having, especially for small grids, because cockpits are three blocks wide, it's definitely better to have um, this mode as the symmetry mode um, on this. I can place more planes, so by hitting M again, I can go to something else and I can activate that and hitting it again. So now I have three um, lines of symmetry here and then if I keep scrolling through by pressing M still we get to block back to block mode so we have symmetry mode turned on so when I build in this corner here we actually get four blocks built on the top and four blocks on the bottom normally when I build a fighter I don't have that many on so we can actually disable them here by going hitting M again and actually right clicking to remove that plane. So we'll just, we'll just stick here with just one line of symmetry, um, the red one here. So if I just delete some of these and scrolling through with them again to get to block building mode. And this will be perfect now for actually building this ship. Save us some time on each side. And you can toggle symmetry mode on and off if you want to suddenly build asymmetrically by hitting N. N turns it off there without going through all the different um, planes. So N and M are the two keys needed for symmetry mode, pretty much. So now we've got this, it makes us building uh, blocks much quicker. The next tip for building uh, blocks quicker is building in lines and building in planes. So if I hold down control and then click on a plane, sorry, uh, hold control, then hold left mouse button, and drag out, you can see here I'm now building in a line. I can change the, the direction that line goes. And while I'm doing this, if I hold shift, I can then move out in a plane as well. And this, you have to be careful here in the angles. It's probably easier if I actually don't do this. Oh, oops. Hit X, fly on the jetpack, and then I can then build a plane here. There you go. So really good for getting like the whole build out real quickly, especially on these bigger ships. So I'll fill this gap in here with a line, and we built plane and two lines. That's also another uh, kind of quick trick for building much faster. Now before we get into kind of more decorative stuff, I'm just going to show you the very basics you need to build a ship. So here's some the main hull of this ship's going to be. 
by hitting three, we'll actually find the cockpit block. And we want to, we want to place this in the very center here. So we'll hit that there with left click. Cockpit blocks placed. Um, we're going to need some power. So we can hit um, four to get to our small reactors. Again, in survival mode, these will need to have uranium ingots inside to power them. But in creative, you don't need to worry about resources for power either. So I can rotate this block using uh, the cube up above. Delete, page down, home end, page up, insert, all do this stuff. So it doesn't really matter so much for this creative build. So I've slapped down three small nuclear reactors here. Next, we can go along the line and go to uh, iron thrusters, which only work in space. So there's three types of thrusters in the game. Uh, we have iron, atmospheric, and hydrogen. Now, um, we're not going to go through the other types today because the main easy start space is the iron thrusters. But um, our atmospheric only work in atmosphere. Iron only work in space and hydrogen. Well, sorry, iron do work elsewhere, but with much less efficiency. Like um, iron are really only efficient enough to work on uh, moons and in space. Uh, and hydrogen can work anywhere. So the hydrogen thrusters can work on planets and uh, in space. That's also worth noting out. So. When it comes to building thrusters, in space engineers, you need to have thrusters in, to say, did I say iron? Iron. Ion. Ion, sorry. Ion thrusters. Uh, you'll need to have thrusters in every direction. So we'll need forward thrusters, which you can place down here. You can just put two down. We'll need thrusters in the side like this. We'll need thrusters going up. Put two there. And also thrusters pointing down. Now I know some of you guys in chat will say you've forgotten something, but I, I do know this. So what we're going to do is now, we're going to hit gyroscope on seven. And we need just one gyroscope for this small ship. Gyroscope enables us to spin around uh, and uh, actually aim our ship in a certain direction. So we'll put down one gyroscope here. And we actually now have all we need to fly this ship. That is, it's not the prettiest thing, but actually it will work. So we hop in here with F, and we're inside our cockpit. We can hold Alt to look around. There we go. And v to change to a third person. Now, all we need to do now is hit P to unlock the landing gear, and now we're able to fly. Now, you might have noticed something here, and we actually missed a direction to have thrusters. So we have our dampeners on, and we're now drifting forward because we have no reverse thrust. And we can correct this by spinning around and using the thrusters in the other direction to actually um, counteract that movement, right? But it's, it's definitely harder when you're flying. Um, you you want to have thrusters in all directions. It really makes sense. So again, we're moving forward here without anything because we have no reverse thrust. So I'm just gonna spin us around real quick, stop us from moving, hop out, fix that issue real quickly, get on thrusters placed like that. And now we have thrusters in all directions and the ship will fly much better now. And like earlier, all the controls, Q and E to roll, WASD to move around, mouse to actually aim, and alternatively, you can use the uh, arrow keys to actually turn ships. There we go then. So this is like the very first basic ship. And you can, of course, make this look a, a lot uh, more attractive. But this is all you need to actually fly around the, uh, um, the space. Fly around space in creative mode. Yeah, plot twist, exactly. Yeah, you guys thought... You guys thought that on you guys thought I didn't realize. I, did I realized that exactly because part of what some of it's been accidental, but some of these things are issues that you have when learning the game, right? But you won't um, like I'm trying to recreate some of the common mistakes that new players make, right? Right. So we have our first working ship, and we can make this kind of. Uh, more funky by uh, putting some slope blocks on here. So 
once I go onto armor block, any blocks in the G screen that have a little plus icon mean that we've, they actually have, um, they're grouped together. So armor blocks is a group of blocks. We have light armor slope, light armor corner, light armor inverted corner. Um, we've also got uh, half light armor block and half slope light armor block. So there's a bunch of blocks in there that you can use and we can access these by once it's, it's, it's actually equipped in my toolbar I one using the scroll wheel I can actually rotate between all these variants of light armor that's the same for heavy armor which is a tougher armor um, more expensive to build and it's the same for wheels same for uh, all kinds of blocks have this plus icon to quickly to save room in the toolbar pretty much and to make building quicker Meteor storm inbound. right so what we'll quickly do is here, I'll just show you how you can might, you know, add some slope blocks to this. I can rotate the block on the grids using the, again, using the control keys up above that are listed with the controls. And now I'm going to do hold control, drag out this way, and now we have a row of uh, slope blocks here. That's all nicely tiled together because that's one of the things in Space Engine is, is armor tiling. So rather than seeing the lines of each block, they actually have armor blocks actually tile very nicely to give this kind of um, more continuous effect, right? And yes, the meteor storm is happening again. So before we move on, oh, painting actually. Let's do this, this kind of painting real quick because that's another kind of key customization option. I think as a new player, you can experiment yourselves with lots of these blocks. A lot of them kind of do what they say they do, and especially rounded blocks and stuff like that. So you can discover those for yourself, I think. But painting is something that's, that's quite important. So to open the painting menu, we need to first have a block selected in our uh, hand. And now if we hit P, we'll open up the color picker. And there's some pre-selected uh, pre colors here. And we can actually change any of these values. We can have whatever color we want. We have a hue slider saturation and a brightness slider as well here. This is all very customizable. But let's, let's take a blue, as we've got this other blue ships nearby. And uh, then we'll hit OK, which is just behind me here. Should be see it through my transparent body. And uh, to color blocks, we can hold, uh, press the scroll wheel. So by pressing the scroll wheel, we color that one block. And because the symmetry mode is still activated, luckily, we don't have to color both sides individually. The painting actually works with symmetry mode, which is fantastic. Now we can hold scroll wheel to continually paint. To paint at a faster rate, we can hold both control which will paint uh, a three by three uh, block area. It should. There we go. You see now when I hit control. Okay. There it goes. I think it was when it's in symmetry mode, it doesn't like being in the middle here. Or wasn't oh, well, it wasn't close enough, one of those. And if we want to paint the whole grid, we can do control and shift. All right, this will have to be, uh, I have to cut this one out. There we go, it's, it's weird. There we go, I found a block and now the whole grid is um, blue. I don't, don't quite know why that uh, is misbehaving there, but um, it should work just fine. So then again, I can now select yellow, say. Can paint some yellow on here. Always fixing bugs in Space Engine, but you know, it's a constant effort as we're in early access to to crack down on uh, all the bugs in the game. So it's another good point if you're a new player in the community, definitely check out support.keensoftwarehouse.com and there you can actually report your bugs, upvote other bugs that um, you've been experiencing that other people have already posted. This is also really key, I think, for um, getting that stuff reported so we can fix it. So um, Using the shift, I was going to show you can really quickly paint stuff. There we go. That's like a, I think it's six by six, I think is the area for, um, was it seven by seven? I can't quite remember for painting. I think it's seven. Seven by seven, by seven, sorry. It's a cube uh, base color. So we can really quickly paint grids, but then you also have that precision with just the single individual blocks as well. That's the painting, and I think that will kind of cover us for building our first ship. This is, yeah, 7x7x7 seven 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 for shift. Um, 
Uh, control is five by f uh, three by three, and then control and shift is the whole grid there. So there we go. Now I'll ask the chat if there's anything that you guys think I should tell you guys about, uh, anything I've missed in this intro section here, any good pointers for new players, or if you are a new player, please don't be shy, ask away, and I'll see if I can get that question answered. Oh, color picker, that's a good point with the painting. So say if there's a color you really like, if you're playing you know, survival with some friends, or you, you're looking at some other people's builds, and you're saying, I'd love to have that tone of red. I can do shift, shift, and then P while aiming at that, and that will add, and you can see the color picker just down here, you can see which color I have selected based off down here, and that will add that color to my color picker here. And that'll actually be saved, so long as I go to something else, that, that's the red I wanted. But if I wanted to, I don't know, this pink here could be also that red, Hit P. You can see how you can customize your color picker within worlds. Looking over suggestions. Oh, cycling colors. Okay, so using the brackets, uh, the bracket keys, you can uh, actually flick between these different colors in the picker. So you can see as I flick through. Which is really nice. If, when it comes to building in Space Engineers, you can really make your building so much quicker by doing this right. You can actually, um, if you have a certain theme to a ship, so, okay, this red ship has black, white, and red. It means that rather than going into the color pick every time or shift P, I can quickly just hit the brackets to switch between the colors that I want. Square brackets, sorry, should I say. Square brackets, not rounded, yeah. Be more precise there. Energy consumption, yeah. So there's more to say about survival. Now on the other side of the screen, I should have done it at the start maybe, we have all the uh, information again about the character, including the speed we're going at and the dampeners and the, uh, the status of various like helmet and uh, jetpack. But also we have bars. Now the top bar is for health, the second bar is for oxygen, the third bar is for energy, and the final bar is for hydrogen. And um, in survival mode, these will all be getting depleted. Health, of course, will be fine as long as you don't um, have your helmet open or if you uh, in space or if you uh, run out of hydrogen or oxygen, so I say. Um, and energy will be getting depleted. When I'm using my tools, so when I'm using my welders and grinders to actually work, that actually depletes energy from my suit. Um, which you'll have to recharge at medical rooms. So if you come over to a medical room here, it looks like this. Um, by holding F at this panel, this will actually uh, recharge my energy. Wasn't going to go into it, but in this, if by accessing this, you can also change your appearance. You can switch between uh, you, the different colors of the engineer, and you can also switch between the female and the male engineer, which we have here. So that's, that's also there. And this is also where skins appear and you can customize your character with various skins that you find in the game through drops. So that's this pretty brief looking at the, the player customization stuff. Um, finally in survival when it comes to kind of uh, keeping an eye on certain values is your jetpack. Your jetpack will actually consume uh, hydrogen when being used and that's something else that you'll need to top up either with hydrogen bottles or with at the medical room. We're actually going to be covering experimental mode now because this is some part of the game which is, I think is important for new players to understand that it's there for them to use. So we'll come on to copy and pasting and stuff like that in a little bit, um, Curvus. I have a plan. I'll have a plan for this. So what we'll do is here, we'll go to the escape and the main menu and we can save the changes, we can come back to the soil whenever we want and it will be exactly as we left it. And also auto save is probably on so it will be saving every five minutes anyway. So survival mode is a, sorry, uh, experimental mode is a, a mode of space engineers which has not fully supported features um, officially and features that currently we cannot uh, control whether or not the, um, they'll have negative degradation on performance. 
But there's lots of cool features in there, right? So if you feel like if you feel like you are ready to step it up, you can go to the game options. So I went a bit too quick there. Options in the main menu, game, and then here we tick the experimental uh, mode. It says here which will unlock unofficial and not fully developed and tested features. You may experience problems. Enabling experimental mode will unlock unofficial and then this kind of thing on here. The same thing. Let me hit yes. I hit OK. And now we're in experimental mode. So with this, when we get a new game, we're presented with a couple more options here. We have custom game, workshop content. The well, custom game was there already, sorry, should I say. We have more options in custom uh, game. And experimental mode gives you more power to customize your worlds uh, to the exact specification that you want. And it also allows you to uh, access uh, some of the incredible mods that our community uh, produces. So you can add custom skyboxes, custom planets, custom blocks. All of that is right there. Now it's worth pointing out that the features in experimental mode are not necessarily there forever and we're already looking at um, certain features and how they, they could transition into the safe mode of the game. So that's key. So now we're in um, the uh, experimental mode. We're going to look for a world here that has... Let's have a see. We want to find something that's created. Oh, actually, it's fine. We can just go to Easy Starts... Um, what should we do here? We're going to Mars. We're going to Easy Start Mars. And then we'll select creative mode. So this is going to be creative mode on Easy Start Mars. And here we can turn off all the save. We can also play locally hosted multiplayer because uh, in safe mode, you're able to access a dedicated servers, a server set up by either Keen or by members of the community. But with experimental mode, you're actually able to host your own uh, private games for just you and your friends. So quickly looking at this, you can see there's lots of multipliers and custom settings that you can change in here to access in experimental modes. These are all uh, normally predefined in safe modes uh, with some predefined settings that we have come up with. So let's hop right in, we can hit start. We'll, we'll build a car first. So we've built a ship. I'm going to show you how to build your first ever wheeled vehicle. I don't know, we'll just come away from the station a little bit here. The sun is setting here on Mars. And uh, yet again, we don't have to adjust our toolbar because all the blocks we need to build a vehicle are right on our toolbar here. So the only thing I will add actually is uh, a landing gear. On the planets, it's not necessary. In fact, on planets, I'll show you that you don't need a landing gear. Especially on planets where you can't, your uh, car can't drift away, I'll go about landing gear here. So, I'll go to first person. I can use control and scroll wheel to actually decrease the distance that the building block is away from me. It can be quite useful when you're trying to reach at things. So, boom, it will drop down to the gravity. So what I'll do is here is put a little base to build this rover on. So, I'll tell you what I'll do is, I've changed my mind. We're gonna go build on the actual, does that have a way down to the, even cooler here. Yeah, yeah so this has a way down to the, uh, the Mars. We'll build on the station, nice and flat surface, but you can build on voxel, no problemo. So let's go again here. Put it down, I will build a small base. And this is just a base to support my, my vehicle here. And common shapes are used are um, either circles, or sorry, squares, sorry, or H-shaped bases, which allow you to have a, like a nice stable base uh, as you build your um, base, as you build your vehicle. So here's an H-shaped base, I can move it. Drag this up. And now I'm gonna start building um, in um, a car. So let's come here, I'll put on uh, mirror mode, hitting M to find the right axes. You want the blue one now this time. Click. There we go. So now we're going to be building this axis here. I'm going to quickly use uh, something which you can you also use in, uh, in creative mode is the admin tools by pressing Alt F10. And this is allows you to change the time of day. So if you don't want to build at night, you can actually change the time of day here. Um, and that's quite useful in creative mode. And there's, there's tons of other features in this 
admin screen, but I'm not going to go over them now because I don't think they're needed for new players. But I think this one is. Time of day can be quite useful if you're starting the game. So here we go. I'm going to start scroll wheels to move further away here. Oh, hello. Missed. As you can see, I'm, I'm pushing this around. And if you didn't want this kind of pushing around thing, you could, you could build a landing gear to lock it hard to the base. Okay, I'm going to drag a line using control and holding the middle, holding the left mouse button. Okay. And one more as well. Use my jetpack still. So here we've got a, a base that's five wide. Put a cockpit on as well. Using the keys here to rotate. Uh-huh. Now what I'll do is quickly is also show you a different form of power. So you've got a G screen, go to battery, or you can search, let's do the other thing, there's a search bar. So if you think there might be some kind of block, um, then you can just search for it and see if there's something that you want. But even old uh, veterans use the search bar because it's, it's sometimes quicker than trying to find the exact block you want in this toolbar, right, in this G screen. So now I've got a battery, I can, fly up here and I can slap the battery on the back of this. I might try and sh make it so it's... There we go. This also provides power, but it, it will need to be... Um, is it actually charging right now? Yeah. Another source of power, just while we're here, is solar panels. Solar panels, I think there's some on the base probably. We saw solar panels at the starting uh, area. And there's, there's tons and tons of blocks that I think you guys can probably discover for yourself. But... Um, it's worth mentioning that solar panels are another source of um, power in the game. So all we need now to actually make a working ground vehicle is some wheels. So we can hit 8 to find the wheel suspension block. And by scrolling through, we can see we have 1x1 one one wheels. We have 3x3 three three and 5x5 five five as well. And different, uh, we have right and left for the tread direction. So let's, uh, let's pick this here. I can rotate around. There's a certain way you want to place the suspension. So if you look here, you want to have the kind of, uh, it's, it's hard to tell exactly when you're first doing this, but you want to have, uh, actually make sure I get, I make sure I get this right here. There we go, that is the right way. Um, the kind of round a bit, the top, and then this kind of bracket at the bottom. Place this down and Luckily, this will automatically, I've placed the left one down here, but it automatically, it won't automatically, actually, oh wait, no, no, I need to place the, for this, I'll need to have symmetry mode turned off, actually. So if I come here and hit N, I want the treads to be in the right direction, so I can quickly do this like this. So, and we won't use these wheels, these wheels are too small, I'll use the wrong ones, so let's go ahead and use the 3x3, three three. they're the pretty standard wheels here, best size, I think. So as soon as we put this wheel suspension down, a wheel will spawn in. Now the reason why I had this entire thing actually raised up here was so that the wheels could spawn in because if there's not enough distance off the ground, the wheels are not able to load in, right? So that's that. And I'm actually gonna make this vehicle a little longer here because I feel like we could do a bit more. I'm gonna use a, hold on. I'm gonna use a plane to build this. There we go. Again, right direction, slap it there. Oh, I was, I was in the way that time, so I'm going to delete it. There we go. Come to the other side and switch to wheel suspension 3x3 three three right is what we want now. So we'll find it. There we go. Boom. And there we go. So now we have four wheels. It's all connected, we can add more wheels if we want, but all we have want to do now to make this drivable is disconnect from the base, delete that, and uh, we should be able to actually drive over this right now. You can have a gyroscope, if you want to have a gyroscope to improve uh, move, uh, movement, you can do, but you don't need to do the uh, gyroscope on uh, ground vehicles. So all I need to do now is drive, and dr movement is the same as the other controls, W, A, S, D, for uh, steering. Now currently all the wheels have the steering. So we're going to go down the ramp here onto the uh, surface. One 
When it comes to, yeah, when it comes to placing the wheels, uh, it's, it's not so clear. I said the round bits and the brackets, but I think a bit of experimentation doesn't hurt. Um, if you're watching the stream, you can see the, you can kind of compare. Th this is the correct way to have them uh, displayed, right? The shiny part faces up. Shiny part faces up. Now wheels should work by default, but for each vehicle, you might want to adjust the wheel settings. So for example here, I might not want to have both of the wheels uh, steering, both sets of wheels uh, um, steering, right? So I can come to the K menu, the control panel, and I have the functional blocks here, and this is a really key part of the game, and it can be quite overwhelming at first, but this control panel is where you change all the settings, and many, many of the functional blocks have so many different uh, settings and customizable Customizability, customizability. Um, so it's uh, it's a really powerful menu, and it's something that it's, it's you can't necessarily learn straight away all the different functions of each block. So let's have a look here. We've got the wheel suspension left and the right. So we place the left suspension back second. So this is going to be left three. So I'm going to come down here, turn off steering. Now with the right, we did it backwards, so the first one was placed, and then was placed, the back one was placed first, so we're going to go down here, scroll, and turn off steering. And for each wheel, you can see there's various settings, and there's a tooltip over each one that explains exactly um, what each one does, and that's also key for a lot of the things in the game, that pretty much everything has a tooltip telling you what uh, each button does. So now we should find, when I steer, that only the front wheel steer. And this might give me a bit more stability and make it a little bit easier driving around here. The chat wants me to tell that if you want to jump in the car, you can use, um, if you hold X or press X, you can watch the suspension. That's not very hard to hold it longer. See it going down and release. Probably not the, oh, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I totally planned for it to be like that. So yeah, but when you're moving, you can use X to actually um, do a jump. Or it's, it's actually, the reason it was implemented was actually to get off uh, tough terrain. Because sometimes you might be on a really uh, jaggy terrain and you actually need, your wheels are stuck in there. So actually you need to um, use the jump to get unstuck kind of thing. It's not, it's not intended to be used as a, a stunt feature, but I think plenty of players enjoy it for that as well. So, there we go. This is great, like Scouser had 600 hours of Space Engineers and he didn't even know that they could do that. So there's still, like there's lots and lots of, there's so many things in Space Engineers that it's hard to learn when you're first starting out. And so many of the things uh, you will discover through experimentation. The purpose of this stream, and again, I guess future tutorials, will be just to get you started, because as soon as you get started and understand the basic concepts of the game, um, a, lot of, a lot of the fun is actually discovering what you can do in the game uh, with all the blocks. So it's, it's not, um, it's, it's just basically going over that first hurdle, that first overwhelming hurdle, like where do I even start, right? That's why this tutorial exists. It's trying to show you a couple of things you can get uh, done in the game. Um, and I mean just to highlight a couple of the things you could do with this rover maybe if you wanted to add a, a, a weapon to it I could add if I search turret I can search the Gatling turret drag it down to the toolbar slap that on the back there and this is now an automated turret which will um, I can control Go. this is so much you kind of go more advanced here but it's okay a little bit more advanced, a little bit. So, to control a weapon, let's do that, it's quite fun. I can hit G, once I'm in a ship, because you have the G screen when you're not in a vehicle or ship, um, and you have all the blocks, but when you open the G screen while sat in a cockpit, you're, it, you're presented with something else. 
you're presented with the character animation still, but also the blocks on the ship, because you can actually have shortcuts in the cockpit. So for example, the one I want here, if I right click over these, I can see the different things I can have, but I want to have control. So once I've right clicked that and selected that, I now have control on the toolbar. So I back out of this, the toolbar's up, I can drive around, and then if I hit one, I've now switched the turret, I can shoot, I can zoom in, and that's all while uh, kind of uh, from the comfort of my cockpit, and by hitting F I can exit out of that. So now I'm actually uh, driving the vehicle with the WASD keys, but I'm also in the turret, so I can actually multitask here. I can drive around and aim the turret. So I'm using the mouse key, the mouse to move the turret and then the keyboard to actually control the rover here. You have to set the cockpit as the main cockpit and then you have to hit alt, yeah. You have to hit alt to make that work. I just tested it again. So I come in, hit control. Right now, I can't move the vehicle. But when I hit alt, now I can drive and shoot. So there we go, a little, little secret trick here, but I've gone way off here for the kind of uh, beginner stuff here, but still it's quite cool. So, there's so many ways to customize your vehicles. You've got um, spotlights and uh, of course the armor blocks. You've got lights and weapons, more weapons here. You've got storage, conveyors, um, many, many different things you can do to make this look really funkalicious. I can't believe I just said that. But anyway, let me just check what we are doing now. Ah, okay, so the final thing, the final thing that we're going to do today's tutorial stream, we are going to show you the Steam Workshop. Because the Steam Workshop is actually, um, if you're new to the game and you want to, see, want to see what the game's capable of, the uh, Steam Workshop has hundreds of thousands of creations and mods at your disposal to have some fun with. So I'm actually going to demonstrate this right now on stream how you would do that. So let me get up this. This is the um, Steam, Steam thing here. So if we go to... Uh-huh. So here's our window capture. And this is, we're now in Steam. So, see Space Engine is still running. This is my... Uh, for accounts here and as soon as you have this you can actually go to the Steam Workshop right here you've got browse the workshop so I click on this I'm greeted with the Space Engineers Workshop you can look at the currently most popular in the last week um, you can search by uh, category you can search by type like world mod blueprint in-game scenario um, you can search by most popular of all time, most subscribed, most recent. There's lots of different things here. So I'll go to most popular right now. Click on this. And you can have a look through what you might fancy. So this is some mods here. We've got some, um, some scripts here. And let's check out this. This is the, uh, the PT sponsored by Aragaf, who's actually one of the designers here at Keen Software House. Click on this. And uh, you can look, have a look at the images and think, hmm, is this something that I want to have some fun with? This is actually a self, uh, it's a rover that, it's a, it's a vehicle that actually builds rovers. It's a self-building, self-building, that's not right. But it's, it's basically a rover factory. So come down here, read the description, information about it, see some comments. And if we like what we want, um, if we like it, we can hit the subscribe button. And that will be added to our personal blueprints. Um, then we can actually paste that into a world in creative mode. So another way to subscribe to things if I go back here, I can also just click, the, if, if I even wanna like open it and just really quickly, I think that looks great, I can just hit the plus icon. That's also now subscribed to. So is this one. I can get, um, get a modern here as well. Well, this is it's a compass mod here. So this is now with the little tick icon, you know that this is now added to your, um, your personal collection. 
So I'll hide this. That's the kind of Steam Workshop on the Steam side. And once you're in game, all we have to do is you can do that out of game or in game. But what I'll do now is you hit F10. F10 brings up the blueprint screen. Now there'll be other ones in here. These are because I have another account. So this is tons and tons of ones that actually um, have been here for a while, you see. But what we'll do is, is we'll scroll down. These are local blueprints. And then we get down here. And this are blueprints from the Steam Workshop. So it should be at the bottom. If you've just subscribed to something, you should see the most recent ones you've subscribed to at the very bottom of the list. But you can also use the sort by name, creation date, and update. And if you, if you remember the name of it, oh, okay, I want to find you know, the, um, the PT sponsor, which I just subscribed to, you can do PT, and boom, you've got PT sponsor. So once you've got it, you can, I mean, first you can see some details about it. It tells you how many blocks, who made it. There's the description here as well. You can open it in the workshop. You can send it to the players in the game, share it. But what I want to do is here, click it again, hit OK, get a loading screen, the loading uh, icon, and now we can actually paste it into the game. We have a block count, and I just, I'm doing some things here that I'm telling you. So it's appeared here, you can see the ship that, I've pasted, that I've, I got off the workshop, moving it around, decide where I want to paste it. I can, you know, change the, by holding control, I can actually rotate it in, um, 90, in by 90 degrees, or by, I can also do it um, whenever I want, like this as well, without holding control, spin it around. If I want to align it to the planet's gravity, I can hit B, and B again, and now it's perfectly aligned to the horizontal. Paste it in, here we go. And oh, we're, we're being attacked by we're being attacked by the hey by the uh, rover that I just built. So let's just uh, delete that. Typical. Okay. Here we have uh, lovely uh, Aragaf's PT sponsor ship. It's a, it's a yeah, it's a factory ship, it's a transport ship. I can come inside here and. Once again, we're on the planet now, so we have, you'll notice this is using atmospheric thrusters because ion thrusters, ion that we used earlier, will not work. Here we go. To just feel like a little showcase here, to show you the kind of cool stuff that you can find. Like, even if you're a new player, you can discover just how cool the the workshop is. I just come out here a second, at the cockpit, I can walk around the ship. I hit this button. This actually welds up a rover. And I hit the one again. Drops it off. Well, I dropped it off too high. Hold on. <laughs> Unexpected mistakes. So there's a bit there's a bit there's quite a big drop there for a little rover. Let me just come down a little bit more. Come down nice and low, hop out again, come back here, welding up. And this is using this is using um, more complex things. I'm not going to go into the detail of it right now. I'm just showing you guys real quickly that there is so much crazy stuff you can do in the game, and you will discover it later. This tutorial is purely about getting you started and getting you hyped for the later game. Okay, now I can release it. All right, now it's good. So I've built my, myself a little rover inside this vehicle. I can hop in and then I can drive off. There we go. This is a really, really nice rover here from Aragaf. It flies very well. I mentioned ship tools, Imp. That uh, ship to oh, uh, it took a bit too fast there. I, I mentioned that ship tools can be used to improve efficiency. Um, but we are already nearly two hours into the stream. So I don't quite know what I'm going to do with this, uh, but I think if you guys, uh, have you got any suggestions, any final suggestions uh, for like the stream? I mean, there's been lots, but I'm going to see if there's any ones that are really vital for beginners. Like we're talking the first two hours right now, you know, I've, I've gone beyond that in some ways. We're talking about the first couple of hours as if you've never played the game before. So I'll just paste another one here. Here's a, a ship showing you how quickly I can paste and stuff from the workshop. 
or from pre-save blueprints. Like, that's another good point. If there's something that you like and you want to save it, like, say, okay, I've created this beautiful wreck. If I do control B, control B, I actually create that as a blueprint, which I can then double click or okay, and I can paste that in, and I can paste that into any world. So that's a key. Another quick thing for useful, maybe for new players, because if you're, if you're really proud of a certain creation and you want to like paste it in other worlds, that's the way to do it. I think the last thing that we'll do is, it's complicated, it's really hard. I mean, there's, I see you know, lots of you guys are suggesting ideas and each of those things could have like 20 minute sections, right? So the last thing I will do is quickly ownership because I just saw what happened with the turret, right? So all grids are either unowned or they're owned by somebody. That's kind of obvious, but uh, grids that you paste in automatically are owned by you. So if I come into this vehicle and hit K, because I built this myself in creative, I own these blocks. I own the cockpit, I own the battery. Not all blocks have ownership, just some of the functional blocks have ownership. So the problem we had earlier with the turrets, I, the turret was shooting an enemy, shooting that thing because, if I get the turret back on here, the gap, oh, it's on my toolbar, the turret was actually set in its settings to target neutrals. So what that means is, if I change the ownership to nobody, this Gatling turret is now neutral, right? And it actually won't target anyone. Uh, it shouldn't target anyone, I don't think. But uh, yeah, it's, it, ownership is really key and you can change it here um, to make sure you own it. But it's also key that you uh, turn off neutrals. Or maybe you wanna shoot neutrals, that's also something else. Um, and this could go into factions and way more advanced things, but just a little teaser, I guess, for, for ownership to keep an eye on these settings. And if you do see your own ship shooting like now, you can see this automated turret, which can either be, either can be manually controlled or uh, it's automated. You see, I'm just driving around here. And as I drive, that turret is shooting. So as you guys are realizing, each topic, some of the topics need 50 minutes each. And this really is designed to be, um, you know, very, very basic here. So I think I've, I've probably gone over things a bit, some things a bit too much, not enough. Um, we've gone over experimental mode. We've gone over Steam Workshop and Blueprints. I think if you guys have got any questions, we will uh, wrap it up here, I think, for tonight. And I think I'll go back over this and try and choose the most vital information and also cut out the loading, cut out the mistakes and so on to really get it down to 15 minutes. Can you read up? Uh, let's have a look. Have a look here. Have a look. Which was this? Did you say something? Uh, control X. Ah, cutting. Yeah, okay, we can go over cutting and pasting. So I did pasting, right? But if we just want to just, if we see something in the world we want to have more of, or don't want of, so we can do either control C, like in many desktop applications, and control V, control C and control V to just copy. Oh, and you can throw it as well. If you actually move it and then click, you can throw it. Or you can, if you stay static here, you can just hold it in place. So that's one thing. Um, but now if I don't want to get, if I want to get, delete these things, if I say I don't want these minutes now, I can do control X, yep, delete, yep, delete, yep, delete, yep, delete, and now I've only got one left again. So control X, control C, and control V are all used for cutting, pasting, uh, cutting, copying, and pasting. So you want me to mention about, uh, Units in game, so ores are in kilograms, ingots are in kilograms, and components are in pieces. So, I mean, this is three pieces of, um, this is three magazines, but if I was to quickly grind, let's quickly drill down so I can just get some ore. 
Okay. So now we have 1.k, 1.57k. So that's, um, yeah, this is in kilograms, not in numbers of stones, right? That's, that's a small thing. Yep, it's also true. It's something I didn't do, but if your ship does not have enough power, then you'll find it will fall or drop. So like this atmosphere, uh, let's say I've built this right now, and I'll take up a couple of the, no, I'll just turn off some. I'll just s simulate. I think it's got a battery on probably. It's probably got a battery, right? Aha, uh -huh, right, let's turn off all the batteries. Okay, it's actually apparently... All right, you'll see the overload now. So this is something where you have too, met, you have too many thrusters or too much power output and not enough input. So it's okay now, but you'll see when I, went, when I go to uh, space, I'm gonna go up, it's down here, we go to maxed out load and it's just going up. But if we move forward here, you'll see that we'll start to drop because the power is being stolen by the ones going forward and there's not enough power in the ship to actually keep you from sinking. So that's, that's descending there. So that's also something that you'll discover when building ships is that power is also very important. Um, too much power draw and not enough output, shall I say, yeah. I think something like, like there's some things that you'll find out the you'll find out by learning. You'll let le you'll yeah you'll learn by uh, exper experimenting, Gwyn. I think some of these things. I believe we have gone over the basics. We've definitely gone over what we wanted to do. I had my list of things to do. We've got the just to go over it again. We've got the introduction, the uh, starting a new world, easy start space creator mode, explaining the sandbox nature of the game, explain the main difference between creative and survival modes. Drilling, refining, assembling resources, building, welding, and grinding. How to build a flyable ship, plus symmetry mode, plus painting and ship controls. Experimental modes, how to build a ground vehicle and ground vehicle controls, and uh, the steam workshop and blueprints. All good things. I mean, this one last thing is actually, if I exit this world, is some workshop things are actually not blueprints, but actually scenarios. They're pre-built worlds. So I'll first see if I've got anything. If I go to, let's have a look. Yes, I have. So if I go to, yeah, new game, workshop content here, only in experimental mode though, we're now uh, greeted with some worlds here that I have subscribed to. And these are whole worlds or whole scenarios or whole mini games, you might say. So that's all there. But that's all for now, guys. Uh, thank you so much for stopping by, and I'm gonna try and cut this down into something uh, short. I don't know, two hours worth of video to cut down, so we'll see how it goes. Um, and if it's too long, then maybe we'll have to rethink this, but um, this is definitely something, even if it's not in-game to link, we can link it somewhere, because we did go over a bunch of, uh, I think, key, key things here to get started. If I was teaching someone how to play the game, that's what I would do, right? That's what I would do. Um, if, if they were sat here right now, I probably would have gone over those main things. So if, if people have the time and want to have it in the background, then, then this will work quite well. So thanks for watching. I will see you all soon. And uh, I hope this helped. Good luck, engineering. <laughs>